Hello and welcome to the Winners Never Quit podcast, all about mental resilience, embracing hardship, learning from it, all to build a winner's mindset, hosted by myself, Jack Jarvis. And if you could like, follow, subscribe to the podcast, I would really, really appreciate it. Today, I'm joined by ex-professional rugby player, George Cruz, who has over 200 senior appearances, 45 caps for England and represent the British and Irish Lions against New Zealand. In 2018, he co-founded 45, a CBD and wellness company, and he joins me now. George, welcome. Uh, thank you. Thank you for doing this, bro. I really appreciate it. Ah, welcome. Welcome. So we start every pod the same. What, yep. How do you define winning in your life? Oh, like, how, how cliche, cliche do you want to get? Um, I think it's cliche as you want, mate. It's cliche <laughs> as you want. Um, Look for, for me, my, my the journey I've been on. Um, I think for me, winning is about obviously there has to be some like some tangible thing, but a lot of it is to do with like enjoying the journey because I'd maybe won a, a, a good number of trophies with through rugby, but like I've definitely learnt the 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 further down you know the older I've got is if you're not enjoying that sort of the the year in the build up then the trophy in itself is only, what, a day in itself. You've got to really enjoy the build-up. So winning for me would be more of like a consistent uh, approach to enjoying creating memories and then accumulating in a, in some sort of a, a win, whether it's a trophy, whether it's a job, whether it's a, a bonus, whatever it is. I think that would be that would be how I see it. Um, I wouldn't, I would never, I'd never want to let myself, like say with business, I'd, I'd never want to let myself just be focused on the end goal of being in that win. Uh, or maybe selling for X or whatever it is. For me, it's like I've got to enjoy the journey, otherwise like, it's useless. I, I do think a lot of people, especially over COVID or or whatever, have realised that that's probably part of what needs to happen as well. Yeah, it's a fine line, I think, because you've got to be goal-driven, yeah. you know, like for you to be a professional role player or, you know, for four or five to get and sell this many units. Well, mm. You've got to be goal-driven, but then also if you become obsessed by that goal, you know, it happens a load with ocean rowers and you know maybe I was one and didn't realise till like say 20 that yeah. you're like, hang on if you're so goal driven and, and something happens yeah. and you don't reach that goal you've just wasted mm. you know all that time so it's definitely a fine line to walk so let's start right from the beginning yeah. as someone that had a lot of enthusiasm and technical <laughs> ability mate I love speaking to like professional athletes yeah. tell me about your earliest memories of rugby but when you realised oh I'm actually pretty good at this this, yeah. could, this could be how I'm going to make a living um, that. Oh, it wouldn't be that early to be honest that, that that point there wouldn't be that early it would have been 18 or 19 yeah. like it, it really would have been after I've been in my first contract for a good year then I thought right actually I'm probably, probably really? good enough to do this yeah because like well, people people there's not where you can skin it but I went from playing like social rugby hard for until I was 18 and then I got a trial just off the back of a a contact that knew someone at, at Saracens uh, when when I was leaving school and I went there for a week and then I ended up cutting my knee open here and as a result they were like right we'll, go, we'll get you back to fitness but in that period I probably stayed another two months and then they saw okay well he's actually he's improving here here and here and probably got the basis of like being someone who could work hard basically so um, in terms of yeah in terms of did I think I could make it at a certain point it was yeah it was it was very much social rugby, sort of following yeah. my brother into into rugby, seeing all the the accolades and the, you know the praise and the the you know what, what, as what you do with competitive brothers, yeah. um, you kind of try and top each other. And I think probably push that one a little bit too far. <laughs> did did he end up playing professional rugby? Or uh, no, he didn't. Like he's he's no, he didn't. But he's super active. Like he's very well built in terms of you know he's well balanced. Did lots of gymnasts, all that sort of stuff. But he's he is. Um, He's quite gifted in terms of being sporty, but uh, yeah, he just he didn't push down that that rugby route. You touched touched on there. Would you say your work ethic is something that cause straight away you, you how you described yourself? You said, "Yeah, I, I had a good work ethic. I worked hard." Yeah. And you described your brother as very talented. Would you say that is something that you had to do because maybe you didn't have as much talent as your brother? Um, nah, he, he graphs hard as well. Yeah, but yeah. like, I, I think what, I've definitely in my position where I've got to. Or where I got to, um, yeah, that 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 is all about working, working hard. Like it's it is it's like I'm in a bit of a dog position that second row where it's yeah, like you're, yeah, you're yeah. clearing up other people's mess. You're just trying to like you you got to push in unseen places. You you, like, you can only really be good if you're willing to 
like step up and work hard, especially in the, in the I guess the, the shadows as, as such. So um, yeah, everything I've done has always been about trying to just be as, as as hard working. And I do think in life, like if obviously if you want to be world class, then you know you got to be extremely talented and and have that ability to work hard. But I think you can be very fucking good, and you can get very far. You just don't have to be a Warren Buffett or whatever, or yeah, Elon yeah. Musk or a Michael Jordan. Like you can be unbelievably good and be highly successful if you are just willing to graft pretty hard. And that's that's one thing I, I think probably is overlooked in a lot of areas. Like a lot of people, that nature versus nurture or talent versus you know hard work type concept. Yeah. Where if you're willing to just do a bit of grunt work for a long enough period of time consistently, yeah, you're gonna be pretty alright. I think. Yeah. No, I I totally agree. I think you always see and you, you know you hear like Goggin and that. It was like you know. And uh, like CT Fletcher, that you know, f- don't find the easy way, find the hard way. Yeah. Everyone's now looking for a life hack, yeah. You know, try oh, yeah. it, too, right? I'm sure you've seen it with business, and mm. you know, and, and it must be frustrating for people like yourself. It was just talented, yeah. Is, yeah. is that something that grates on you? Because I'm a big believer in, I always thought, oh, I, I never had really nat- much natural talent, but then I looked and I actually analyzed my childhood, mm. I didn't practice enough. Do you yeah. know what I mean? That yeah, was yeah, it. Yeah. Well, it's that, uh, who writes it? Uh, see, uh, it's the ten thousand hours or whatever. Yeah, bounce. The yeah, book. bounce. Yeah, yeah. yeah, there's like, but it's, it's like it's pretty simple way of viewing it, but it, it's it's got to count pretty much for for heaps of it. You know, like, are you willing to work hard enough and be somewhat smart enough and also have luck and things like that? Because you know the amount of people who are, oh, I blew my knee out and you know I would have been this. There's a lot of bullshitters, but also yeah. there are genuine people I can think of. Like a few players, you know, heaps of players actually who could, who would have been England internationals. Like a lad like Will Fraser, he he probably picked up ten injuries on the bounce, just ridiculous injuries, yeah. R- injuries which people were like physios from all around the land were coming and going like bloody hell, let's have a look at this and like study this because he was he blew a lat out or something in a way which no one's ever done before. Yeah. It's just like so. Uh, anyway, what I'm saying is, yeah, you can be lucky, but I do think a lot of it is is hard work. What was that first professional tap like when you walked out in front of that crowd? What was mm. that feeling? And as well, what were those early years like at Sarries, like as a young lad, doing what you love and getting paid and getting pretty good money? Pretty good money. I was on five grand for my first year. Yeah. So, uh, and I'd started at the bottom at Dorking of the M25. I'd drive up to the top train and then I'd drive round, train at Barking, and then I'd do the, the last <laughs> quarter. And I was getting paid 5K and some petrol money. <laughs> And because I was doing so many miles, yeah. I was actually getting paid more than some of the academy lads who had been there for two or three years. Yeah. But um, yeah, so like there's there's obviously all those sort of things which kind of, you know, pass by you when you are older and you're getting de- in a, more, a, a better contract. Yeah. But um, yeah, what was it like? It was it was good. It was fun. Like I've always, I've, always, I've I've thoroughly enjoyed my career. Uh, I could definitely do it a couple more years. I think for me, like I said, part of it is about memories, journey, trying to um trying to pack as much in but yeah enjoyed it I thought first couple of years I was really like a project player so yeah. like whereas people have been in the the uh, academies since maybe 13 14 like your Owen Fowles Jamie George's I'd just come in at 18 and I was like skinny and I was crap so yeah. basically like <laughs> they stuffed me in a gym and just like force fed me for a year and I put on like two and a half stone yeah and then all I was doing was like skills and and learning like my body, learning how to run properly, all those sort of things, which unless you've been in an academy where someone's, you know, it was the first time I'd done weight training type stuff, you know, so that was interesting in a, in a straight, like sorting my body out, but I could do that. I could focus on myself. I could, you know, I could see improvements. So when you're seeing improvements of weight or um, lifting weight or fitness or skill improvement, like it's yeah, it's pretty contagious. And we were lucky with a group we had maybe, um, five, about seven players, which kind of s- was the backbone of like that Saris team for the last ten years. Yeah. Um, and and like a lot of them end up, you know, like Owen, like Jamie George, Jackson Ray, Will Fraser. There was a lot, a lot, which kind of we definitely had a, a we started to ba- a lot of bounce off each other and yeah, really yeah. like really drive each other. Yeah. And I think that was quite important. Um, especially as like I said, been one who was who could work hard but was wasn't wasn't great talent like wise mm. uh, i think it was pretty useful but yeah and then you get like your first start you're f- in a in a like a uh, academy type game you, you might you get first start in a what you call like a fa cup game yeah um you get your 
Premiership start, European start. So there's like a, I, I pr- pretty much did do a like a steady climb steady up. It yeah. wasn't like maybe like a Maratoji jump on the scene and he's you know already playing um, international straight away type stuff. Yeah. Like it was a steady progression, and and that's probably the route which you know if you're more of a me type player where you have to work hard to to improve. Yeah. Um, that's that's I, do, I think it reflect a lot of people in you know your your business your you know yeah in in your military and, and so on like you just someone chipping away really. Yeah. Yeah. No. I know all about chipping away 111 days at sea, mate. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. You touched on Marotoji there, right? Is, I heard a story. <laughs> is it true his his dad was like, no, he's not playing rugby. Like, um, he, he I think yeah, I think they wanted him to do some, you know, some academic stuff. But I mean, you have got a man there who works hard on and off field. So is, you know, he, he he's smart. He's yeah, a smart yeah, man. Yeah. He works hard. Like he he deserves everything he gets. Good wise, like yeah. he's he's a good man. Yeah, really no. Good. I, I didn't know if that was true. I heard his dad was like, "No, yeah, not, no, but you get, that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you get, you get, you get lots of people trying to push that way." Um, I know a couple of guys who are kind of I'm in an iron weather turned down Cambridge and those sort of things, and you know, some have gone and done Cambridge and then put themselves back on loan to Saris or, yeah. or or clubs like that, and then post them finishing that degree. But a good club now will, and and still not many do, but a good club will. Make sure there's as time, you know, and if you need to miss training, so like with Saris, I had to miss, you know, some afternoons trainings to then go to do uni and yeah. so on. Like they, they see the benefit and the value in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a good a good club would would promote that. Awesome. When was your first England call up? What was that moment like? Did you see it come in or was it out the blue? How did it happen? Yeah, it's it's always this bit of like flirting games with like coaches, like the head coach. So that then would have been Stuart Lancaster would. We'd be like asking questions about the player, and then the players' coach, so like Mark McCall at Sarah's, would be like, "So, what's, like asking you questions, and like, and yeah. like giving you little like tips, uh, tidbits around, like, okay, well, this is what they're looking for, type thing." But I think I was down to maybe go for the a tour, summer tour, New Zealand in 2014 or 13, but I did my knee, so they, they were basically after like they were they were asking questions about you, type thing, and then in 2014, autumn. I got a cap against New Zealand. Yeah, yeah. What, what was that like? Yeah, I come off the bench, shot out the line, gave a two on one. They scored, <laughs> lost us the game. <laughs> it's all fun and games, isn't it? That is literally what happened. We were up, we were up maybe I don't know ten, ten. Eight Funny, or mate. Just before, obviously, before we start, I said, mate, I won't put, no awkward questions. Like, I want, I want you to feel good, enjoy it. And I'm like, oh, I'm sure, there's, I'm sure there's more, mate. There'll be plenty more that come out. But um, no, nah, it was like. But, you know, also you you got the elation of playing your first cap and so yeah. on, but um, yeah, it was it was brilliant. I think that the the thing for me, like what I said, is it is about for me. It is that journey, it's the memories, and sort of like being able to have a load of stuff that you can look back and go, "Fuck, that was brilliant. That was brilliant." Yeah. And and part of that, obviously, is the family thing, the friends thing. Uh, but I think a, a brilliant thing about rugby is that, like, say World Cup final in Japan, I'd had twenty odd mates who had you know, who'd come over to watch yeah. or family. And that's like, that's given 20 people an opportunity to do something that they'd never, no one ever goes to Japan. I don't know why, but yeah. it's a brilliant country and they should do. Yeah. But like, it gave I've, seen, them, I've seen that on the Instagram. You were like, yeah. if it on your bucket list. Yeah. 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 yeah hundred. I, I, I'm blown away by it. It's an awesome country. Um, but, but yeah, I, th- I think, you know, that's given that many people an excuse to go over, experience something bigger than what is just, you know, I was playing a game of rugby, but yeah, I, I love that. I, I really, really like that about that about sport in general. Yeah, um, but also about you know the the career I've had. That was the 2019. Yeah. We'll talk about we'll talk about the final in a minute. But what was mm. that whole World Cup experience like? Because as a fan, and I'll admit, I'm a casual rugby fan. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, up until the final. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. I will show you a picture of me in a minute. So make me, me and my mate. Uh, so it, obviously it was first thing and uh, it was his like girlfriend's birthday and, he was like, mm. and we're like right mate rugby we'll get our face painted we'll booze up yeah, yeah, like yeah. and we'll just it'll just be such a like really good day and it was pissing down of like fucking November yeah, yeah face yeah. painted and you're going at half time and it's just like not working out for us yeah, at yeah, all yeah, yeah. and it gets to you know sort of like 75 yeah. and you sat there mate as uh, you know like a 23 year old with your face painted <laughs> <laughs> so you, streaking right, yeah from, yeah literally from the November and it just puts that, yeah li- I think we were like we had like two pints and we were like 
I'm not going on all day now. Are we? No, no. I'll just, I'll just see you later for, for the birthday <laughs> party. Yeah. yeah what was sorry so, about that. mate? Don't apologise. What was the tournament like mm. before the final? Uh, brilliant tournament. And like I think off off the back of the 2015 World Cup in in England, yeah, you know, we, we bombed out hard there, and I think I think there was like it definitely was a, a growing phase, like um, the the players we had and the systems and so on. It, it, like they had done a lot of work. Say Stuart Lang has done a lot of work to, sorry. But 2019, I think, um, like we'd done a lot of that work. We'd we'd won a lot. Mm. Uh, you know, our percentage win rates were pretty high, uh, but also we'd lost some pretty big games as well. Uh, so we'd had the the highs and the lows to to learn from. Uh, but the yeah, I think the the actual tournament itself, uh, brilliant. We did a lot around. Um, sort of bit openness before, so honest conversations. Yeah. Uh, so before, you know, we had uh, a good number of pretty deep, honest conversations with people, and that you know that left some people pretty vulnerable. And therefore, there were, you know, on some socials there were bits which ended up with a couple of players leaving the camp and so on. So, like it, it, it definitely gelled us a lot. Like we we allowed ourselves to take feedback a bit better and so on. Um, and and I say that because that I think was the building blocks for what was a pretty like a really good time like the whole the whole journey the whole very well planned very well executed um like i don't think many of the players have been to japan it was like a you know quite a big sensory overload on a lot of different stuff as well so they had a good balance of focusing on uh training on on the games but also like the the deload and the sort of yeah. recovery aspect um yeah and i think building up obviously the uh, the, the New Zealand game was was phenomenal. Yeah, it um, was. It yeah, was class. A, a proper game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, and yeah, obviously, like South Africa, very in, in high pressure situations, a good simple game plan can work. And they're like the geniuses of uh, of a good simple game plan. You know, big big players, run hard, scrum hard. You know, they 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 run that game plan very well. And I think it was probably just the game plan and the, and and the sort of nerves. I think. Got to the got to the the group. Like I said, mate, I'm I'm a casual fan, but <laughs> yeah. you know when yeah. like Sinclair went off, like what within the first five minutes? Yeah, knocked out in the first minutes. Yeah, right? so even those sort of things, and you know you're in for a long scrum day when you've got a, a, a team. South Africa ran a six-two bench, so six forwards on the bench and two backs. Yeah, a traditional play is a five-three, so yeah. five forwards, three backs. So they stacked up their forwards basically going right we're going to try and grind them down and bully them uh, and they they did a really good job and played played off the back of that so once yeah. they've got the advantage once they've got the penalty then they just start running running right and and, and I think that's yeah they did they they played the right game the right game plan and and, and beat us on that don't ever apologize mate like <laughs> they, what what I sort of mate it was uh, it was really yeah. good no it was good and like you said there you had that sort of highs of New Zealand game then the then the final but mm. what was one of the um you know, toughest. What was tougher, maybe losing in the final or, or the way you went out in 2015? Oh, definitely losing the final because if it's there, you know, it's, it's there. It's like you've got some like that, that. The mindset of some in life would be like, you know, like even getting to the final and losing is that's that's a loss. And yeah. I, I do kind of lean towards that, you know, like. But I think when you have a bit of time to to reflect, like the whole journey uh, and and then that leading me to go right actually this place I love it I'm going to go spend I'm going to get my agent to, to get me a contract here like yeah. that whole journey aspect is you know it is brilliant so yeah I'd say the the Japan one was, was tougher to take because like I said it, it was there um, it's there for the taking and um, but also yeah yeah I'd say that one yeah T tougher to take it's tough to say, yeah. yeah it's funny like from you who lived it, you know, because like I said, again, like the casual fan, the armchair fan, yeah. would be like, oh god, like crap, going out, like yeah, yeah. never kicked a ball, do you know what I mean, down yeah, the local yeah. park in 2015. But straight yeah. away, people are like, oh. yeah, yeah, but yeah. but to have it so close, yeah, and I can sort of draw parallels. The most emotional part of my row was the last 36 hours. Yeah, it was so close, and you're like, imagine if I, I fail now. Yeah, 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 you know, I've got to redo all that hundred and yeah. 111 days. So you touched on there your Panasonic Knights that mm -hmm. you joined, yeah. From Japan, what was that like? Because up until probably the World Cup in Japan, mm. people would not associate the game of rugby, yeah, out there, yeah, yeah not yeah. at all. So how was that? 
and and you went on. Did you unbeat them that season? We didn't lose a game when we were out there. Yeah, which which was unbelievable. But well, you go out there, you didn't lose a game. <laughs> hey, I'm the best player in the world. <laughs> <laughs> nah, like it's um, it's tough because because I I was I'd planned that when I was 27. I'd planned going abroad, um, and I'd spoke to like people like Eddie Jones to help me get that all in place. Mm. Uh, and then Saracens got done for a salary cap um, investigation and like they got relegated and then that made me think okay well actually should I stay should I stick around and, and you know cause heavily part involved with everything there yeah. uh, for, for 10 years or so so uh, it was a big it was a big decision and also like I was still getting picked for England like I was you know it was a, it was a bold time to do something different but yeah. I was um, yeah and that's like that that leap of sort of faith or whatever and because I know people had been to Japan and not enjoyed it and I know people had been to Japan and really enjoyed it so I think it is um it was based around I did a lot of research around what club basically you ought to get the right there's probably four decent clubs there which you can have a really good time at yeah the other ones you might be banging your head against the wall a little bit but um yeah I, I went there in a really good group of lads um and I think like rugby in, in general in Japan off the back of the win in 2015 against South Africa down in Brighton it was like you know quite a memorable game for for many yeah. um like they 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 funneled a lot of a lot of uh, energy into into rugby and uh and yeah they they are they're a, they're a decent they're a decent team like we had a we had a really good team we stacked full of sort of Japanese internationals but also the likes of like Marika Corbetti Hadley Parks a number of like really up and coming uh players as well so in, instead of like maybe pre 2015ish they were um, sort of recruiting people who might be your 32s. They've done a big in, international career uh, and they want to get their last like year or two out of them and they pay them stacks of money. Now they're recruiting people who are like 23, 24, very decent players, uh, but then can fit into the Japanese system if they stay there for three or five years and they can become Japanese as such. So, um, yeah, the, the, the level of coaching, the level of, of players that is is massively increasing over there um but it, it's still like probably half the teams are decent half of them are pretty average yeah what would you is there any sort of parallels you can draw to like this country you know to maybe you know explain like where is it sort of at is it the same sort of popularity as is it like the same popularity as rugby over here as it is to them yeah, or? I'd, I'd say so yeah yeah um like they have got they support things like sumo wrestling basketball baseball they go nuts for like quite hidden weird weird things you just never really think but i i think with rugby um it's a shame that covid happened just after the world cup uh because um realistically they like as soon as like they, they got good success in the in the world cup yeah uh they ran it a really nice tournament really uh, went down really well with the, with the japanese and they they had heaps and heaps of fans like it was like 20 plus thousand to every game they were and then COVID happened um, but still because they and then they had like measured things back in so 5,000 yeah. 5,000 and then you can go to 10,000 whatever but like our final we had 35 40,000 so there's a good there's a good following yeah um, uh, and most games we were at capacity of what we were allowed, allowed yeah. yeah so kind of five and then ten but yeah like there's a, there's a healthy enough yeah, yeah. And, it, and it's it's different structures so it's run by companies so Say Samsung, Panasonic, that's the, yeah, that's yeah. the Tigers. You'd have like Mitsubishi, you'd have Panasonic, you'd have Centuri, you'd have yeah, all sorts NTT comms, like which are. So you'd have it's it's run differently, uh, yeah. And like the in say England, you'd have all professional, as in professional being they all got contracts, but they their job is all every day, yeah. Uh, and then the off days they they rest. Um, in Japan, they've got probably half of them are amateurs but they train they play as much as the professionals but then on the off day they work basically yeah uh which i think is a brilliant system because you know th they've then got jobs for for life pretty much and yeah. especially in the japanese culture so it's just different yeah it's different what were the uh socials like out there yeah a bit a bit, a bit of tarpaulin on the floor a bit <laughs> like and you know and you just don't know what's coming <laughs> clear the room tarp, tarp the floor yeah interesting they've they they traditionally can't drink that well they're yeah. not good drinkers uh yeah they and they love things like highballs which are like whiskey and, and soda and uh like so social and like so, sort of sake and, and, and yeah. things like that so yeah they 
and they've got like these strongs which are like basically like black current but they're nine percent and they just yeah they 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 enjoy a drink and um i think when they have a drink the sort of like the social rules around it are that you don't really mention stuff in the morning how silly silly you get uh and you do get pretty silly yeah. yeah yeah it's good it's really good really good but again like with covid we we got to experience a good bit, but like, you know, it was probably dulled down a, a touch as well. It's funny you say that. Like, me and my old man always talk about like, British culture because like, yeah. he lives in Indonesia yeah, yeah, now. Yeah. He says, Yeah, we like have read, like, straight away as soon as you come, like, oh, do you want a beer, Jack? And I'm like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you know it's what I mean? sunny, though. <laughs> yeah, it's not like you can't help it. Yeah, it just yeah. brings out in you. So, like, we've touched on the socials, we touched on um, the rugby. Tell us about how 4 5 came about. Yeah, uh, so 2018. Uh, well, I guess taking it further back, like like I said, with 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 Saris and things, they they really encourage people doing it at universities and so on like that. So I I had a degree, uh, I did a degree in business, uh, and kind of was like just searching for a little bit. Uh, my the other co-founder was searching for a little bit again, done a degree, searching for a little bit something else. Uh, and in 2018, WADA, which is the World Anti Doping Association, I'm sure you as an as a military, you get, yeah, you, yeah, do you get yeah. tested much? Yeah, yeah, we do. Um, it's like completely random. Yeah. So, yeah, it can be like once every six months yeah. or then you can have like two in a month. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, WADA took CBD, which is a, uh, it's, it's a compound out of out of the hemp or cannabis plant, mm. um, not the THC, which is stuff that gets you high, high. and so on, and also pulls a, a drugs test. So, yeah. they took CBD off the banned substances uh, and, and as a result, like me and Dom start taking it, I got a... In January, in January 2018, I had an ankle operation. Dom had a knee operation in February 2018. So yeah, we we started taking it. Got got some good use out of it. Good mm. benefit benefits out of it. Uh, and then kind of fast forward, we got like a good range of supplements. Uh, more like your daily essentials, so your fish oils, biotics, and so on. Mm. Um, and I think for us, like the, the emphasis is just, and also the shock of like actually when you look into when you get like decent people to look into those products a lot of it is just good marketing yeah. uh, and pretty crap products so for us just trying to do stuff a little bit more a little bit more a bit more integrity in terms yeah. of like right this is a decent product it's very well formulated but and we've got a you know the effort goes into marketing it and sort of trying to show why someone should pay a bit more for something that actually works rather than just get fooled by marketing so so that's like the basis of what we're trying to do good good quality supplements for for active people um and yeah we're in we're in boots. We're going into a large retailer soon in the next month. Um, and yeah, enjoying it. It's like, for me, it's, it's running it alongside, um, rugby. Um, also going to Japan gave me a bit more time because, you know, probably less like leadership meetings, less these, these, and mm. also a, a longer off, off season gave me a bit more to time to do business bits. But, um, yeah, for me it was like right. I either come back and try and push for uh, maybe like a World Cup um, in 2023, or uh, you know take the opportunity I've got. So I think for me it was a, it's it's a healthy way to to bow out at the right time um, yeah. and and pursue something which I'm like unbelievably excited and passionate about. Would you say that made your retirement a lot easier having something? Because I'm aware that you maybe did you want to like leave the sport in relatively good, yeah, Nick. Yeah, like I did a a more of a project on my on myself really in terms of like, well, what do I want from here on in? And, and like a large factor, like I said, was creating as many memories and all that sort of side of it. Um, but also, you know, I want to see more family. I want to see and the sacrifice of weekends. But then, I want my body to be in decent enough nick. Uh, I want, uh, you know, what are the opportunities I've got in hand? So I did like a, a took like three months or something with with a a lady who basically does these sort of things sort of planning out what I want in the next 18 months. And I found that very useful to then pull the levers of, okay, well, I'm I'm happy to sacrifice this, maybe salary now or whatever it is to to then go, well, in a year's time, then I should be in a better place. Because I, I do feel like, well, I say I, say I feel the, the data shows that, you know, there is, I'm sure, I'm sure it's the same, if not worse with the military is that, that cliff face of, you know, being in a routine, get everything handled for you like how many circles you probably don't see many circles at all uh in terms of if you're just in in the military like we are in say rugby 
your head's down and you're only really socializing and circling and you, you get kind of lose touch with what real life is and yeah it's, you know everything's fed to you basically not it's not as bad i think in this yeah. like my generation but certainly my dad's yeah. generation yeah yeah because we're a lot more connected now like yeah 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 and especially as blokes it's interesting what you said earlier about you know effective feedback and like having some honest conversation with them do you think they were writing letters to their no, mates no, like no, yeah. you know be like that yeah, yeah. Like, who's this yeah you must fancy yeah, me do you know what I mean yeah, yeah. Ben. yeah 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 and I see it a lot maybe with like his peer group 22 years in the military leave as a regimental sergeant major and you go from mm. being this mm. up Some here authority, some, yeah so. to fucking nothing. yeah and then and then what what do you do you, yeah. British culture we just drink yeah it's really bad and does that happen a lot in rugby that guys think they'll last I know um, Ricky Hatton talks about it in, yeah. like boxers and then there's just phew, nothing. Does, is it yeah. as common in rugby or? Yeah, and, and that's like there's huge pushes at the moment, and it all ties into like where people's mental health is at the moment. Where you know stuff, all the changes in COVID have let people think about you know different things and so on. I have seen a lot more people think, oh, I've actually got to start planning." Um, but the traditional sort of the traditional, if I was a stereotype of rugby player, it would be. Um, like build up through academies, get your first team contracts. You get a, a decent amount of money. They'd probably buy a property or two, uh, think that that's going like, to help them and then like for life and then come out not having that secondary thing and then sort of, yeah, not not be ready for it. Uh, and, you know, the, the stats are, I think it's like 60 or 60 or 70%, 65% kind of end up with either mental health issues, bankruptcy, divorce or whatever yeah. it is. You know, so so issues off the back of just not really being prepared, but it also ties in with, you know, if you're doing your, if you're doing like a contract too many, because you know a lot of people will try and sign that last that two year contract at the end of their career where you know they could bag some money and and crack on. If you're doing that and you're injured and you're sore, like it's just that's just it's it's hard to to battle through and keep motivated when you're very sore and so on. And so those things, I think, when you like it's just trying to plan to avoid that. I think is is the key, and and it will work absolutely work for some, and it and it won't it really won't work for others. Um, and I think, yeah, the more more people can do off field, and there's heaps of like the RPA Rugby Players Association clubs at the moment are, are very hot on it. You know, just trying to prepare for for stuff after. Did you in during your career? Did you have any have any bad injuries? Yeah, yeah, I've had seven ops. So yeah, I've I've, I've been Strong. Around, yeah I've been around. Like, three ankles two I've had like one operation in my life wasn't yeah. even that bad <laughs> yeah 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 uh, like it's it is um, it's part of it and you can be like you really can be one you know one big injury away from retirement as well so it's, it is you do have that but um, were any of your injuries sort of on that sort of level nah like I mean this one's quite tidy enough but like mainly I had three ankle clear outs or three like bits of bone floating around in them I had a wrist but nothing like, you know, you you do your, your neck or anything. But but then also you've had like, it's just wear and tear. So I'd have maybe eight or nine epidurals in my time. Epidural? What they give the pregnant women? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just to help you your, sort your back. But then also it's like some bits up your neck and so on. Like you know you know what you're getting in for, and it's not yeah. like, and it's yeah. I think every you just a bit. There's definitely a culture of like, yeah, I'm fine type thing, and you you crack on much like there would be in yeah 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 many yeah. many types of walks of life, but. I think I think it's it's just I I believe and in my opinion you can do that till like you're sort of thirty or so but if you're if you're doing that till you're thirty five thirty six and then you come out with nothing because you've just tried to really extend your career right to the very end then you come out pretty much falling off that cliff but also you're fucking sore and that's like no one like you for me I'm when I when I was least motivated I was just consistently sore so like you're getting up and your ankles are killing you the first 20 minutes a day like that's when I was least motivated uh, and I was I'd say a pretty motivated person throughout my career so mm. it's, it's like yeah you just I don't want that to trickle into my next life personally so that's why a large a large portion of um, you know that mixed in with fa more family time more this 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 a big opportunity with four or five so yeah kind of just tied it up um, to, to make a decision now rather than in two years time yeah exactly mate no one wants to be fucking walking around in a zimmer frame do they yeah. 36 mate yeah 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 um, some, something we didn't talk about and something that I, like really like intrigues me is, is the the Lions yeah because in football that would never happen you know yeah, it, it yeah, doesn't yeah. happen really 
I mean, I know you have the Olympic team, but yeah. for you to come together and, and what is that experience like? Yeah. So you obviously New Zealand, how was that? And it described that because it's pretty alley, mate. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, it's yeah. a cool thing. Yeah, it's good. Like, and, and they still kind of respect the, you know, the good piss up before, good couple piss ups during. Yeah. Like, they 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 do respect the. We'll talk about them in a minute. <laughs> yeah, uh, they do respect like the the social side and that sort of it was more of a touring party than, you know, with with England or with international, you are like you, you can get a couple drinks in, but it is like pretty business like, like as yeah. in you've got to, you know, like you you understand the, the the pressures. With that, it's more of a it is more of a. It felt more a bit more like a, a touring side, and, yeah. um, not quite as much as the barbarians because that was that was loose. But um, <laughs> it was, yeah, it was it was it was good balance, really good balance. And like I don't know, like I don't know whether you have it in, like you might see people in different. I'm I'm, I'm coming up with army army lingo here, yeah. which I could be well off platoons. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, or yeah, yeah, bat, yeah, bat, yeah. Bat, bat. So you like platoons, troops, companies, yeah. battalions, battalions. Yeah. yeah. So you might see people in there, and you might they might be like the loud life on. You might think he is, a, he looks like a knob. But then actually, when you end up doing an exercise and and you know you gel with them, you oh brilliant. So you get that so much in in even when you go from like club to then playing in England, you're yeah. like oh Danny K, he's got to be a dick. But then actually you go and meet you know, yeah. and then most people are really nice guys. It's just like you always have that that bit before. Who um, was um who was that guy that you thought we are not going to get along yeah. on the Lions tour? But then you were actually like, oh, he's, he's uh, pretty sound. Probably some of my own teammates at Saris. <laughs> <laughs> Happy with that, mate. Yeah, fuck. Yeah. Um, nah, I, I, like, nah, you know, you know, there, there'll be a few characters. Yeah. Go there. But um, but like 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 in all walks of life, there's only like a small amount of people who are actually dicks. Yeah, yeah. Um and. Yeah, it, I think the bringing together of that, so you, you, some fierce battles, say like some the Irish team, because we'd played them with Leinster in some big finals as well, which pretty much the Irish team at that point, Saris was a lot of the backbone of the England team. Like you'd have played each other a good amount. So say say that or say Pete Mahoney in, uh, in, uh, in Munster in Ireland, like, you know, those types of things, you go, well, there's a good battle there every time. And then actually when you come together, it's like, yeah, it's like you kind of know each other, but you don't really know each other. But then you got good amount of respect for each other and it's just a lot easier to, to connect. Um, yeah. But yeah, I thought that side was brilliant. Um, you, like you learn heaps on those sort of things as mm. well. Um, I, may, I imagine the level is... Yeah, the level's pretty premium. Yeah, yeah. like training training level, it, it was good. Like it was brilliant because you, you got some very, very good players. Um, uh, but yeah, that was good. Played the first test. Played pretty crap, got dropped, and then went on a two week stag do basically. Yeah. So it was yeah, it was <laughs> it was unbelievable. Yeah. It was it was really good. I got a nice balance of both. Um so yeah, that was good. What were those socials like uh for the barbarians? <laughs> Barbars were yeah. interesting. Like it, it is it was testing me and like, you know I I I don't think I can have a beer, but it was testing. It was yeah. um yeah, we didn't train till really Friday. Like my <laughs> first breakfast was on Friday morning. Yeah. Um so it's it was tough and and, and actually it, it, you can really tell when you're playing because I started to cramp up I never cramp I started to cramp up at like 55 minutes I was thinking what is going on oh, yeah but yeah damn it those, nutri yeah. those nutritionists yeah. know what they're talking <laughs> yeah. about damn it yeah I was trying to make a case for us going on the pistol week but um, yeah no it was, it was brilliant um, again like I never I, I was looking at France or Japan um, but the World Cup over there kind of swayed it for me yeah uh, and but it's, so I never really got to get deep in with a French culture, and a lot of those barbars lads were French, and they again you just a completely different way of doing stuff, uh, and even you can you can see that within a with like a week a week of being with them. So yeah, it was brilliant, worked out really well. No, awesome. I always say drinking culture in the army, I always think is very similar to sort of that mm. like rugby culture. Yeah, but there's certainly the, the drinking culture in the army. They're trying to sort of change it like they don't squeeze, it out, a squeeze bit. it out a bit which i think is is wrong and be interesting here in your because i look back at my initiation it was pretty pretty, <laughs> pretty horrific yeah but i was tough enough like and i took it and i enjoyed yeah. it and, and everyone else had done one before me so yeah, what, yeah. what do you think about you know the drinking culture and i, and I know teams and there are instances where it does does get taken too far. I'll yeah, be the first yeah, one yeah. to say, yeah, that's probably too far. Yeah. Um, but what what do you think? Do you think it's a good thing? Do you think it's a bad thing? Um, I think 
I think it's like you, the thing is, <clears throat> you'll get players who who won't really want to drink, and they'll feel awkward then having to go for a drink. Yeah. Like if you have like all right, lads, we're having a team social. You you'll see ones that they're like, and we'll go from. Uh, you'll start at seven and and you know we'll finish up at ten. But if you want, you can stay longer. Yeah. You'll see heaps that will just on like nine fifty nine. Right, right, we're out of here. Yeah. Uh, which which I think is fine. Like crack on. But I think as long as as long as like there's a uh, there is a sort of emphasis that there are people that you know even if they're not drinking or whatever that they're adding to the group. Yeah. Then that's brilliant. Uh, and I think I judge, I just think ultimately if you have a beer. People, you know, relax a little bit more, and you can get a little bit deeper with someone. Yeah. Like, I, I, that's it's it's very simple way of putting it. That, but that's not to caveat that I, I don't think you can relax and and get to know someone properly without a beer. Uh, I think, yeah, some of those initiations probably that we've done over the years are pretty, like, you know, they're they're pretty outdated now. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But that's not to say that I like. Would I do it again? Hundred yeah. percent. You know, I, I, I'll, I'll be the first one. Yeah, naked. I'd love, yeah, on the bar, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it, it. But only because. Yeah, I, I think it's just something to laugh about in the morning. You know, and you get a little bit silly, and it's a good story. But as, if people didn't want to do it, I'd never think. Like, oh, you, you're like, what are you doing? Yeah. I'd just hope that they'd add. Uh, yeah. add to the group just as much as like the guy who gets way too shit faced. Yeah. Like, as long as he doesn't take away from the group. You know, then that's then that's also acceptable. It's yeah. just, um, yeah. I, I, but I do think it's 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 the the quickest way I've found to get a group together and to get them to bond quickly. Yeah, you know? no, and I totally agree. I don't could work. There was a guy that didn't drink, so we just made him drink like two liters of milk. <laughs> Full fuck. He's like, oh, yeah. I don't drink alcohol, but I want to take part. We we're yeah. like, good lad. Yeah, yeah. Get that milk down. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, and I, I, I agree. I think you should turn up the socials and then yeah. if you don't want to stay till four, five, six in the morning, then you can go whenever. Yeah. Um, mate, that's almost time, but I just want to finish the the podcast by asking you one final question. Please. What, if you could give some advice to yeah. a young George Cruz, what would it be um, for him to tackle life? How, how long, young are we talking? Let's go... 90 yeah yeah go away 18 19 just starting professional 18. rugby um good question really uh, side <laughs> yeah 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 it's not it's, it's, it's not good for not, not good for radio this yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, i would say uh i'd say work hard um uh which i which i, I think i did uh i'd say plan but also be flexible which i think i've done uh, but I'd say make sure like, yeah, I'd say I probably wasted a few years uh, really obsessing about like just winning or, or like, you know, really wanted to be, get that trophy or whatever. I think, um, I think just trying to encourage to enjoy the, every bit of the journey. Uh, yeah. Like yeah. find ways to do it, F find ways to enjoy the journey because I know like sometimes it can be quite hard or, if you've got, like now with business, like, okay, well, we want to maybe exit or merge in three years. I was like, well, this means everything's quite stressed and everything, but find ways to, to enjoy it. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's probably like the kicking challenge. Like the kicking challenge, yeah. <laughs> that that took me. Uh, <laughs> that, that was stressful. <laughs> yeah, that was. How long did it take you to do those beanbags? Back in too long. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you haven't seen, go on both of our Instagram. There's a kicking challenge. And George only agreed to this if I did it. <laughs> And yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah, 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 it took me. It took me <laughs> about. Uh, so, yeah. do you know I had to change boxes? Oh, because so, so I had to see, the seat. So I had to see me. Like, I kicked it so many times, it was just like mush. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I had to use the other one, and luckily I managed to get that in like ten yeah. attempts. So it was no, pretty. It's just every time the bin moves a little bit. Close. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, now but, I'd go. Uh, I'd just. I'd go the. Um, I'd, I'd emphasize trying to make memories and 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 enjoy because like don't always fixate on. You know, it's quite easy to go like, oh, cool. I, like, when this happens, it'll be all right. When this happens, it'll be all right. Or, or like, you put milestones in and you think, oh, you know, I'll, I'll be able to relax then, or I'll be able to, yeah. I'll be successful or deemed successful then, or whatever it is. Um, yeah, I'd say like just fo focus a bit more on really finding ways to enjoy now. So if it's something you like, if it is like you like going for a beer, then go for a beer. Or yeah. if it's doing yoga or whatever, make sure like you're planting them in instead of saying okay well when i hit this 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 milestone i'll then do that because it, that's just i think that's just the rat race right i think people just
get further and further down the line and they've never actually have done what they've wanted to do or they didn't enjoy it as much as they could have so that, was, that would be my mate my that's advice. a great way to work uh, finish the pod work hard enjoy the journey guys thank you so much for listening George yeah, thank, thank you, you for coming on mate I appreciate it right, if you enjoyed that guys please like subscribe follow all that good stuff really helps grow the podcast and we'll see you next week for another episode unless this is the final episode all right then we won't see you <laughs> in which case edit yeah in which case edit this out right George mate thank Cheers, you mate, mate. really you, appreciate it buddy